Thank you so much for tuning in to She's All Over the Place with Kiriaki. That's me. Welcome back to another episode of Culture Kids. Today, I have Brian Scholarly with me, and he is the founder and creator of WebStock. We're going to jump right into it. Brian, thank you for joining me. How are you? I am so great. Thank you for having me, Katie. It's so great to be here. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Making it happen. One step at a time. One listener at a time. Excellent. That's uh, what you do. Uh, you do it so well, and it really, truly is an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So diving right in, uh, your in music and you've been successful. So tell us your musical journey before pivoting into Web3. Yeah, that sounds great. So my whole life I've been obsessed with music and uh, I started my career early on uh, working with the Peter Shapiro ecosystem of live venues and entertainment. So if you're familiar with the Brooklyn Bowl, the Capitol Theater, the Lockheed Music Festival, uh, I was on the team kind of early that all oversaw the expansion. I was actually their first ever video director. I architected a lot of some of the production infrastructure within that live music ecosystem. Uh, after that, I moved into tech. So I worked for uh, some tech companies in music. I worked for a really great company out of Europe called Music Traveler, with, which is basically the Airbnb for renting music spaces. So so that was really cool. After that, I ran my own company for a long time. It was called Launch. We did uh, production and programming solutions for companies like Central Park Summer Stage, Universal Music, Jack Daniels. So kind of an all-in-one media and entertainment hub. Uh, after that business, I started what I'm currently at the helm of, which is WebStock, which is, of course, a integrated uh, Web3 event production and activation toolkit. And throughout that entire uh, career, I've always uh, been a musician, working with artists, attending zillions of concerts. I ran an underground nightclub in Brooklyn for a couple of years that had vibrating transducers under the floorboard that were tethered to the, the soundboard and had immersive projection like before that was cool. But yeah, just a very wide ranging uh, media and entertainment career, wearing many, many, many hats. And that's what led me to Web3. Three, because as you know, uh, the music industry has a lot of uh, historical challenges that Web3 is poised to fix. Yeah. So when did you pivot into Web3? I think the minute I pivoted into Web3 was, so I was aware of crypto, mm -hmm. uh, but when I really saw this as the future, ironically enough, was the Dogecoin Boom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because someone, some friend of mine, I don't can't remember who, was like, hey, there's this new like meme coin. Like they copied the Bitcoin code and like they're just making like a joke token. Like it's super cheap. Like you should snack some. And I was like, what does it do? He's like, I don't know. It's funny. So I figured out a wallet. I bought some Dogecoin and then it went up in value. And yeah. I like made money doing absolutely nothing. And I was like, this is awesome. And while it was awesome, I had no idea how? And I saw this as something that was purely speculative. And then that led me on a really deep dive where I actually learned the technology and then became obsessed with how do we move beyond the speculation? How do we create that type of incentive alignment where everyone pumped Dogecoin to the moon? How do we take that level of you know passionate alignment within the community? And how do we apply that to different verticals that can lead to sort of good to great businesses over the long term? So uh, ironically enough, that's Dogecoin was the thing that got me diving in. And, and now that I understand the technology, there's so much that can be done to actually create real business using this technology. And uh, that's what I'm super excited about. If you can't tell. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. And then um, how did you come up with the name Webstock? I am of the firm belief that musicians and artists are truly the arbiters of culture. They really say what is cool. And I believe that 1969 was a really watershed moment for art and music and creativity. Because in upstate New York, you basically had an autonomous community coming together to leverage communal resources to create a brand new form of celebration around art and music. And it was called Woodstock. And that's led to a extremely valuable new business and cultural vertical that's immeasurable in value, right? So Woodstock's over here, essentially the first DAO. And then over here, you have blockchain, which is the future of finance, uh, transparency, 
privacy, ownership, identity, experience, access, you name it. So Woodstock plus blockchain, Webstock. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And speaking of the technology and the old system that doesn't work with music and where we're going with decentralization, how are you implementing the technology with the artists in Web3 and for the future? That's a, such a good question. The crux of the matter is that live event ticketing is broken. And you know it's broken when historically artists make 12% on the dollar within a multi-billion dollar industry. You know it's broken when 90% of fairly priced tickets for events are given to brokers instead of fans, when artists aren't even seeing a dime from the $13 billion of secondary tickets sold each year. What we're doing is we're actually providing an end-to-end -end event management solution where we're giving artists the tools and the technology to create new avenues of revenue and incentivized fandom. So there's a couple ways we implement it. Uh, one way, we have a wonderful partner we work with called Kid Labs, uh, KYD, it stands for Know Your Distribution. So this is a really innovative new tool built by uh, some of the folks who actually were at Ticketmaster. And it's a, a new ticketing platform and fan loyalty platform that actually helps artists and event organizers make more money and reward fans in really unique ways. Another way is we do a lot of metaverse concierge work. So we help artists take their live events and project them into the metaverse. So this creates more eyeballs, more avenues of revenue. We also help artists architect their Web3 strategy. We do a lot of different forms of education. We also have onboarding events. So at Webstock events, for example, we just had an event in East Denver. We're going to have some events coming up for NFT New York in a month. And we actually do events where we can bring artists and musicians and the live music community together to actually learn about this technology and be empowered with this technology. Uh, so, you know, how we really do the onboarding, it varies, but we basically go around and we do the due diligence of finding the best platforms, the best tools, the best metaverse capabilities, the best blockchains with the best, you know, the highest throughput, and the best processing. And then we actually bring those to artists and event organizers uh, with, uh, within our ecosystem in order to uh, empower them to make more money because who doesn't want that? Yeah, so if someone new is listening here and they want to get involved, where do they start? Where do they go? What do you suggest for an artist that you see and then you want to onboard them and help them with the avenue that they want to take? What is the first step or two that they can take? So the first step for someone who's looking to enhance their career through joining the website ecosystem, uh, you can... Find us on any social media platform. So we're Webstock, W3BSTOCK. Uh, so you can go to Webstock.io. That's our website. You can learn all about us, and there are links there where you can get in touch with us. We have a Telegram chat, which is like a social community chat where we uh, do a lot of different uh, networking and working. So you can join our Telegram chat. Uh, we have an Instagram. Uh, we have Twitter. So you can send us a DM on Twitter. You can send us an email at Webstock at Gmail. Dot com. I would say the best way, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, whether it's sending an email, whether it's going on Twitter, whether it's going on Instagram and sending us a DM, uh, we're in all the places. So whatever you're comfortable with, you know, as a modern day uh, social media and uh, internet adventurer, uh, you can really find us anywhere. So we're just at Webstock on pretty much anything. We're even on LinkedIn. If you send us a message on LinkedIn, we'll see it. So find us out there, send us a message and, and we'll get back to you. We'll, we, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to bring in our ecosystem. Yeah. And then a lot of times artists feel alone and very independent and by themselves, especially as independent artists. So with the WebStock community, it's kind of like they already have a built in audience. So does the community support the other WebStock community? So when a music's coming out or an NFT or they're performing, does the WebStock community really get involved, show up, retweet, support and get more exposure for these artists as well? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have about about 300 engaged folks in our Telegram community. We have just over 3,500 on Twitter. We have about 600 folks in our Discord. They're all very engaged. Uh, you know, I think one thing that a lot of Web3 projects struggle with is 
engagement, uh, just because especially in this market, now that we're way, way far into this bear market and so far away on the other side from the crazy speculative boom that we saw, you know, over a year ago, a lot of projects really struggle. And that's when you really seeing what is the secret sauce to aligning a community, which is real value. So in our community, we love live music and we love art. Absolutely. Our community exists to support the artists and musicians within our community. In many ways, I almost think of it like a co-op where artists, musicians, event organizers, investors, technologists, who are all really aligned around this same incentive of fostering and proliferating music and art sort of within and around and framed on this lens of Web3, they're all part of our community and they're all fingers on a hit. And each piece provides something unique that only they can provide, but together you're able to, to lift up the whole cantaloupe and uh, enjoy the delicious uh, fruits of the uh, communal labor, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so uh, short answer, Yes. Yeah. And then so if someone's listening and they're into music, but they've never minted anything and they join the WebStock community, you have people, community members on a team that can walk them through setting up a wallet and walk them through like where to make your first NFT. And then um, it's no charge to the artist, to the person tuning in, to the person who wants to pivot and try something in Web3. There's no fees to them. Do you have people within the community that can show people one, two, three steps and how to go in the right direction? Because there's a lot of scams and bots and, you know, buzzwords around NFTs and things that are in the news. So do you have an internal team that can support people when they're onboarding to take the first step if they don't know how? Absolutely. And we would encourage anyone who's in that position to come and join our community because mm -hmm. you'll see pretty quickly that this is not, um, we're not standing in the toxic space. There is a lot of toxicity in this space. There is a lot of wash trading and pumping and dumping and very, very sketchy financial stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're not that at all. So I would absolutely encourage anyone who's thinking about getting into Web3, join our community because we are happy to help you. Uh, everyone on our team really is an expert in the space. We've all uh, been rugged. We've all had NFTs stolen. We, we've we all gotten scammed. We've all been compromised. And therefore, we all know exactly how not to. And we are overjoyed to share that knowledge with new members of our community. So absolutely. And I would say start by just meeting us and introducing yourself and joining our community and checking out our events. We have folks in our community who have been part of our Discord, who have been interacting with us on Twitter spaces for months and months and months before they actually decide to, you know, come in and purchase our NFT and actually officially join our blockchain community. And that's great because, you know, when you ape into WebStock, we want to make sure that you feel really, really good about that. We want to make sure that you're getting a real value from that, which a lot of projects really don't focus on. Yeah, I love that. And the thing is with the digital age, it can be an international artist. So I have a lot of listeners, you know, in England and the Philippines internationally, because this streams in over 100 countries. So you don't have to be in LA or New York. If you're not going to the IRL events, you could still be a part of the metaverse events and then be in the discord and the telegram. And just by being in the telegram and reading what other people are sharing, it's a great way to learn as well, you know, so you can observe, take notes and do your own research and check things out. So this is not financial advice. We're just sharing and caring here. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, love all that. And then also y'all are into comedy too. You just had your first AI roast stand up comedy show. So um, I was there and um, that yeah, was- you were. That was awesome. So do you want to talk about the comedy part of WebStock too? Sure. Yeah. So we're looking to transform all aspects of entertainment. And one key aspect that we weren't really seeing happening in Web3 was comedy. And so we're in this huge AI hype cycle. Everyone's talking about it. And everyone's either terrified or, or maxi or confused and 
you know, most people are like, what the F is a chat GPT? And we were like, this is funny. And we can actually use AI for comedic entertainment. And we're like, everyone's freaking out. There's this crazy hype cycle. Let's just do it for comedy. And let's just do a fun comedy show where we bring really fun, interesting people together to do live comedy entertainment inspired by Web3, powered by Web3. So yeah, you were a part of the very first one, which was incredible. You did an incredible set. Uh, I was in stitches the whole time with your Billie Eilish bit. So yes, of course, we had the great Katie Chinakas. We had Todd Monesey from HBO. We had Harmon Leon from Vice. Uh, we had Kyle Bostic from the Eric Andre show. Actually had a live improvised comedy roast with a generative AI avatar of himself. It was hilarious. And the AI won because AI is really fucking smart. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be growing this ecosystem. Essentially, we're going to start doing a couple shows a, a month in New York, London, and LA. And then at some point in the next month or two, we're going to be dropping an NFT collection that offers sort of uh, VIP access to that ecosystem, meet and greets with the artists. Uh, the great thing is, to your point earlier, no matter where you are in the world, we stream all the events to our comedy club in the metaverse, uh, just like we stream all our concerts in the metaverse. So no matter where you are, if you like the idea of doing comedy uh, enhanced by AI and Web3, uh, we love to meet you. We love you to tune in. And we love you to keep coming back. And we'd love to have you at uh, our next couple events because you were freaking hilarious. Yeah, my pleasure. Of course, I'm there. I'm definitely there. And I love how you say, like, if people can't be there IRL, they can stream it in the metaverse. You also have like a complimentary NFT for the people who attended afterwards, like, mm -hmm. a, you know, so you do proof of attendance and people can start collecting these items. So how are you integrating? Well, that's how you're integrating some of the technology through spatial streaming in the metaverse, collecting an NFT, being a part of the community. Are you multi-chain or which platforms are you building on currently? So we are multi-chain and we believe that the future is multi-chain. Yeah. So our, uh, our NFTs, so the Webstock Genesis Collection, which is actually minting now. Uh, you can pick one up today for 0.06 ETH. That's minting on the Ethereum chain as well as the Polygon chain. And those NFTs actually unlock our NFT holder lounge where holders can, uh, they can buy exclusive, really high-end merch for holders only. They can actually vote on different aspects of programming within our ecosystem. Uh, they can access live recordings of all of our past concerts. So we did a concert in London with Violetta Zeroni, Sammy Ariaga, Ray Eastlod, some of the musicians who are really paving the future of how Web3 can support artists. We have our entire comedy show in there. So those are on ETH and Polygon, but then our ticketing backend is on the Aptos chain, which is the chain that actually developed out of a lot of the engineers at Facebook kind of left to build Aptos. So they have a lot of the engineers from Facebook and then a lot of the engineers from Solana went on there as well. So Aptos is a chain that we're really, really excited about. It's a really flexible substrate for doing a lot of different kind of dynamic uh, use cases on top of it. And they have a really high throughput as well. So basically NFTs on ETH and Polygon, ticketing on Aptos. This is great. We need like a, an on-staff writer to be like blogging on Substack and Mirror XY Z or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the future is multi-chain. You know, there's there's no, yeah. there's no if ands or buts about it. You know, and that's going to be great. Just like the future, the metaverse. We're going to need a lot of different players. You know, there can't just be one metaverse. You know, it needs to be like the internet, where you know all these different ideas, all these different tools, all these different protocols are all able to come together to, you know, create these new categories of, of commerce and business and culture. Definitely, definitely. Um, and then so pivoting into NFT NYC, you're doing an event. So can you tell us about the event that you're doing and what's what can everyone expect and be excited to see? I would love to, Katie. So on Tuesday, April, 
11th, we're going to be doing the second annual Webstock Music and Art Fair in New York City. Uh, it's in a venue called the Blue Building, which is this adorable light blue three-story building in Midtown Manhattan. It's on 46th and 3rd, surrounded by skyscrapers, and there's nothing like it. It was an old horse stable, so it was a horse stable in the 18th century, and a lot of the original architecture is preserved. So it has these incredible brick walls and old beams and really ornate ceilings and it's this wild sprawling experimental art gallery and multi-use event space there's really nothing like it in new york city it's like a modern uh hippie sanctuary in the middle of new york city so it's incredible and we're gonna have over 30 leading music nft artists performing. We're going to have over 30 NFT tastemakers represented. We're going to have a future of cannabis lounge with some of the different companies that are pushing the boundaries on uh, cannabis as we move forward within wellness and medicine and investment and that sort of thing. We're going to have some of my friends from Burning Man are going to come and do some really cool experiential interactive art. We're going to have NFT displays. We're going to have little NFTs where you can buy NFTs on the screens where you can come learn about NFTs, where if you're a collector, you can come meet some of your favorite NFT artists and uh, most importantly, is an open bar. <laughs> very cool, very cool. <laughs> Off the top of your head, I know there's like over 30, there's so many, but um, who are some of the people confirmed to perform? So I am personally really looking forward to Dill. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dill, he's at Famous Dill on Twitter. He's a good friend of mine, Dylan Rhodes. He is one of the artists that's absolutely writing the map on how artists can create new avenues of revenue and fan engagement through Web3. He's an artist who, he had like a number one hit song, the song called Jordan Belfort, which was, I think still is like the number one college frat song. It has like millions and millions and millions of streams on YouTube and Spotify and centralized platforms. And he has made more money selling a couple thousand NFTs than he's made getting millions of streams on traditional centralized platforms. So that just shows you what's possible there. Yeah. And, and Dill's been a supporter since day one. So he's been really, really tremendous in helping us grow. So we're really excited to have him back. Um, I can't say too much, but, but we are dropping a lineup soon. But I can tell you we're going to have uh, the Cartel, which is a big uh, Web3 hip hop coalition. Uh, so we're going to have kind of a live uh, hip hop cypher jam that's going to be really cool. We also have uh, Nifty Sax and Fifi Rong, uh, two of our favorite Web3 musicians uh, out of Europe are gonna be coming back. Uh, we're gonna have Star Fox and The Fleet, which is a really, really cool New York City-based psychedelic rock band. And beyond that, I think we actually just confirmed we're gonna have this really, really, really fun experimental artist who's um, kind of uh, splits her time between New York and LA and named Kiriaki. So <laughs> I would say I'm really, really stoked for that one. Oh, you're so sweet. Yay. I'm excited. Woohoo. It's going to be super fun. And anyone listening to this, you should definitely come. It's on April 11th. Yeah. What's the 411? What's the 411? <laughs> well, the 411 TLDR is it's um, it's $35 or free if you own our NFT. So that's just one example of the types of utility that we allow. And uh, it's a really great opportunity to come and party and hear some great music and learn about Web3. So uh, yeah, what are you waiting for? Yeah. So uh, circling around real quick, a little context. When I was in LA, I went to uh, Women, World of Women, their second annual event in Los Angeles. And I met this woman, Lisa, who's the CEO of this brand right here. It's called LA. And uh, it's really amazing. And it's hemp infused adaptogen. And actually, they had a booth and they were sponsoring the Nolta shows at Art Basel. And I saw her again, and I'm having her on the show. So uh, I'll talk to her about uh, sponsoring 411, 411 for WebSock. Like, you know what I mean? They have product here in New 
York and LA. So yeah, I'll actually be talking with her tomorrow. So I'll make an introduction so we can make that happen, especially with all the stuff you were mentioning. I think it's a really good like brand fit. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, we're, we're announcing the full lineup next week. Uh, so I can't quite say yet, but we do have a number of pretty high profile cannabis companies. We have some hemp drinks, some solventless products and stuff like that. So uh, that'd be a great fit. And look at that. We're, we're making deals live on the air. Web3, we don't stop. Yeah. I mean, it's transparent, right? <laughs> it's all transparent on chain. Yep. Yeah, if yeah. Anyone listening, you uh, we're not on a soundstage in LA right now. We are actually on a podcast talking live. None of this is scripted. And we actually, uh, yeah, we just hashed a potential business deal on the air while recording live IRL. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So with all that being said, and I mean, because that's a big thing, you know, NFT NYC, it's coming up. What's the projection for the rest of 2023 for WebStock and the community as you're building and growing? Yeah. So some alpha here, uh, none of this is announced and we're not even close to solidifying the final lineup, but we are putting together a WebStock festival in Sydney, Australia. That's going to be happening this summer. We are also going to be growing our Comedy Bites ecosystem mm -hmm. in a very impactful way. So we're going to be doing some Web3 comedy shows in London and in Los Angeles. Uh, beyond that, I'm almost certain that we'll be going out to the UK for NFT London. Uh, if they have that in November again, I'm not sure if or when they're going to have it, but if they have it, we'll definitely go out there. And I'm almost certain that we will also have a presence at Art Basel, uh, Miami Art Week, which is uh, typically in December. So that's right now, that's we, what we have on the docket. You know, we have events popping up almost every single week. And what's really cool is that so much of our events ecosystem is driven by our community. I, that's what I know is coming up for our community, but our community really knows. So it's really tough to say our roadmap because so much of it is informed by the incredible dreamers and doers that make up the, you know, kind of engaged stakeholders within our community. Yeah, which is me. I'm a part of the community. And so I'll be the first to say, oh, I get inspired. So I have this idea. You know, I'm from Detroit, like Motown, music, music, Detroit. There's a Detroit Dow. There's a lot of stand-up comedians. There's a lot of stand-up clubs in Detroit, you know, music, comedy. So, and it's my home base and it's not even too far from New York. So we we'll love to put some feelers out with the community, reach out with some connections in Detroit to possibly put something on the books for web stock in Detroit, the best time, not when it's scorching hot, you right. know, <laughs> um, not when it's snow and cold. So it's seasonal. So there's a, like a, a particular sweet spot. If we wanted to be outdoors with music, like on the grass where kids could come, you know, and, and have it be interactive on a stage or something, if we wanted to do something outside. But I think, you know, we should definitely sow seeds for that connection to happen because of the talent that are in Detroit. Yeah. So just putting the feelers out there and kind of sowing a seed for that to happen. And I can, you know, you're a great producer and, you know, I produce so we can help produce it together. That would be awesome. I'm all ears. Let's uh, put a pin. DM me. Yeah. And we'll one-on-one. Uh, we'll -on -one. Yeah. 1,000. Yeah. Oh, offline. Yes. We'll, we'll yeah. take that offline. But yes, I would absolutely love to. And um, Detroit's an amazing town. And uh, I know it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop this year. And I love Jay Dilla. And I know he was really popular out there. So I'd love to potentially do something where we can integrate like Motown and Jay Dilla and do kind of like a hip hop, Web3, Web Stock neo hippie celebratory uh thing that'd be awesome yeah sounds good uh i have some peeps too in the music industry who've been very successful in um throughout the world and they're rooted from detroit and they've been wanting to be a part of something as well so they've already said yes to me and so we could have them be a part of it which is really cool too in addition Sick. for the people who aren't their irl they can participate you know through the metaverse that's the beautiful thing and honestly i so many people ask me well, why would I do a show in the metaverse, you know, if I could just live stream it? And it's like, on a live stream, you can't turn and talk to the person next to you who's watching that live stream. You can't go have a conversation with someone in the back, you know, and you're not truly there. 
you know, you're watching a live stream, but when you're in the metaverse and live art is happening, you're in a fully navigable, high fidelity, persistent digital environment. You're there. And like on a live stream, you can't say I was there. Even on Fortnite, it's, you're not, you can't really say I was there. You yeah. weren't at a live experience. And so yeah. I, everyone benefits from doubling events in the metaverse. Yeah. I mean, there's always something to say about being in the moment and feeling that energy and being part of that collective energy that's happening in the moment. They say when people pray and meditate together, it's that much more powerful because it's multiple people doing it and not just one person. So it makes it more impactful and, and stronger. It's, and so it's so essential to, to who we are as human beings. Yeah. Great. Any last thoughts as we um, hone it in and wrap up the show for today? Thank you for having me. If you're listening to this and you're down with paving a more equitable future for creators, uh, please join us. We'd love to meet. We'd love to bring you into Web3 and let's do cool stuff together and create a better world for artists and fans and everyone. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Brian, for joining me. Everyone, tune in to WebStock. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, check the show notes below. Also, we're doing giveaways every single episode. So it doesn't matter if you hear this episode tomorrow, right now, four years from now. We're constantly doing giveaways. People in the community, they're gifting NFTs, experiences, things of that nature. So please write in the subject giveaway, the subject, the title of the episode you're listening to, write in the comments contact form on the link, one or two valuable inspirational lessons that you learned from this episode, and you can be entered into the giveaway. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Katie. You're the best. Yay. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Kiriaki, over and out. <laughs>